Shri Anand Mahima is a beloved Hindu saint who graced our planet from 1896 to 1982. She was born in the village of Kyora in present-day Bangladesh. Her name, Anand Mahima, was given to her by her devotees and means joy permeated mother in Sanskrit. She attained self-initiation at 26 years of age. Her saintly qualities have been widely recognized and have also been mentioned by Paramhansa Yogananda in his book Autobiography of a Yogi as follows. I had instantly seen that the saint was in a high state of samadhi, utterly oblivious to her outward garb as a woman, she knew herself as the changeless soul. From that plane, she was joyously greeting another devotee of God. She travelled throughout India and Bangladesh, teaching the importance of living a God-centered life. Everyone could be in tune with the Divine, and every opportunity in one's life, be it work or family, done with sincerity, love and devotion would enable one to walk the noble path. She was a vegetarian with a compassionate love for every living being. Her acceptance of all faiths and backgrounds along with her universal teachings of divine love and joy has enabled countless people from different walks of life to benefit from her wisdom. Sri Ananda Mahima was renowned for her realization of joyous self-sufficiency and ability to lovingly connect with people through her spontaneous discourses kindly directed at the individual audience to enable greatest understanding. Today, it is a pleasure to share selections from the book Satvani, a collection of the teachings of Sri Ananda Mahima, recorded and translated by her devotees Paiji and Atmananda respectively where the devoted saint gives guidance on how to be close to God. Restlessness, agitation, doubt and the like are certainly objectionable, yet it is the search for happiness that lies at their root. Like a child, thoughtlessly flitting here and there, not discriminating between good and evil, the mind ever seeks joy. But the evanescent pleasures of this world that come and go cannot hold the mind for long. Loving attention and reprimand are both necessary for the education of a child. In a like manner, the mind has to be trained. By frequenting the company of sages, saints and seekers after truth, by harboring only pure and noble thoughts and emotions, by listening to religious discourses, and by reading books of wisdom will be provided the right sustenance for the mind inwardly as well as outwardly. Gradually, you become free from all worries until at last you find your rest in the Supreme. On the battlefield, one has to lay stress on the means of self-defense rather than on provocative attack. Similarly, one should take special care to keep oneself protected within the entrenchment of discrimination and intelligent reasoning reinforced by consecrated activities that make the mind God-centered so that the outer enemy in the form of craving for sense pleasures may not be able to intrude. The mind is its own friend or foe. The mind itself has to destroy its own ignorance. The easiest and most effective means for purging the mind is to associate with saints and seekers after truth and to ceaselessly invoke the name of God. People seek only outer opportunities and conveniences, 
they fail to realize that so long as they are merely concerned with success and failure, they simply remain on the surface of things. Unless one looks within and without simultaneously, God cannot be found. The body, worldly possessions, one's home and people belong to the external. Meditation on the self and the endeavor to let one's thinking be permeated by him are inner processes. To run after physical and mental comforts will only strengthen attachment to external pleasures and Rost will call it inwardly. This is why life after life has to be spent in cleansing the mind from all accumulated dross and impurity. So long as one cannot make a clean sweep of outer attractions, one should at least aim at directing one's attention within as well by seeking the essence of things and meditating on Him, who is bliss eternal. Gradually, the glorious moment will dawn when one's whole being will be united in single-minded contemplation and the inner and outer wielded into one. You are given too much discussion about sattvic or pure vegetarian food. For this body, sattvic food means to nourish oneself with divine thoughts and emotions and to abide in the awareness of truth or God. If once a day you eat perfectly pure vegetarian food but remain engrossed in worldly thoughts all day and night, of what use can sattvic food possibly be to you? Within the motor of the mind, pound the medicine of God's name or of self-inquiry with pure aspiration and partake of it. In this way, the opportunity for a right diet as well as the necessary ingredients for making it effective will be provided from within. At all times, let your objectives be noble, give your whole attention to your work, your mind and body will then develop the qualities you are trying to create by sattvic food. Anything taken in through the senses is food. Therefore, be watchful and see that you do not become addicted to what you observe into yourself. Strive always to keep your appetites under control. Essentially, there is only one inner call, but the different religions have devised different methods to make man aware of it. Once a man awakens to it, there is no more need to cry out again and again. Truly speaking, it is not you who call him, but he who calls you. Just as in the hushed silence of night, the sound of distant temple bells can be clearly heard. Even so, when through intense and undivided devotion to him, the hunger of the senses is stilled. His call will find response from your inmost depths and reverberate through your whole being. Then and then only will true prayer spontaneously flow from your heart. This divine call is bound to come to everyone, for Shiva, the eternal spirit, has resolved himself into Jivas, sentient beings, and every creature has to become reconverted again into Shiva, or the eternal spirit. Just as water freezes into ice, and ice melts into water, so this play of transformation of Shiva, or the eternal spirit, into Jiva, or sentient beings, and Jiva into Shiva goes on and on through eternity. In this world, one cannot afford to ignore anyone. Every human being has a claim to some measure of respect and support from every other. No one should think that he is of greater importance for the maintenance of order in the universe than anyone else. Without a ruler, a country cannot be governed. On the other hand, there can be no ruler without subjects. Each one is progressing continually on the path of action that has been assigned to him by the Creator. Therefore, 
to consider oneself great and others small because of any merit or position of prestige one may have acquired is a serious mistake. Rather than regard this vast universe as a conglomeration of countless particles, look upon it as one indivisible cosmos and all distinctions between high and low will then disappear. A man who respects himself will have even more respect for others. Without respect, reverence cannot develop and without reverence, love will not awaken. When love is wanting, the Lord of love recedes into the far distance and will be difficult to find. For more information on Sri Ananda Mahima, vegetarian, please visit Sri Sri Ananda Mahima Sangh dot org. Vegan, because we cannot sell our soul for meat and blood. Gentle viewers, it was wonderful to have your company today for words of wisdom.